Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you, Simon, for having me. I'm uh, just I'm here, and uh, today I'm going to be taking through a trading masterclass on how to use charts on Think Trader. I think the first thing I should do is introduce myself and why I'm presenting this uh, webinar series right now. So I work for Think Markets as an equity and derivative sales and service consultant and the resident market analyst here in South Africa. Uh, in my way, I've cut my teeth, I've cut my teeth at derivatives, trading desk, equity derivatives, tra trading mainly agency and principal trading at international banks and international brokers. And finally, if I have to tell you one thing about myself and the financial markets is that I believe in the marriage of fundamental and technical analysis. I know that sounds, um, for a lot, that may sound quite paradoxical, but for me, it'll start making sense once we get into this webinar tonight. So what am I going to be taking you through today? So I'm going to be taking you through understanding which charts are available on ThinkTrader and which ones are best for your trading. I'm also going to be taking you through how to simplify your charting because what I've seen with my clients over the years is that they think the more lines they have, the more trend lines, more support lines, more indicators they use, that they're going to get better analysis. Well, as they said, that simplicity is a fine line between eloquence and plainness. I'm just going to be telling you how to make your charting a little bit more simpler. I'm also going to be telling you how to use the tools for drawings on your charting and telling you about different lines that we can draw. Very simple. Uh, also show you a basic understanding of the trend and momentum indicators, one each and how I use them and trading an ascending channel pattern. So I'm going to put out a disclaimer as we start is that I use technical analysis to confirm what I see on a fundamental basis on the security that I'm analyzing. So you can say when I told you guys that I see that there is a marriage between fundamental and technical analysis, I make all my analysis on a fundamental level. And then I use technicals to confirm those to see if it is the right time to get into that trade. So I use it for confirmation and I also use it for timing. So right now I'm going to just take you through how I analyze a security on ThinkTrader and show you the tools that I use on ThinkTrader as well. So this is the Think Trader platform. As you can see on the Think Trader platform, I currently on the left have a toolbox in which I have all the securities that I analyze and I watch on a daily basis. And for you to see uh, all our securities, all you need to do is go to the top, to the bottom left of this toolbox and press on the addition button. And there you can search for the security that you want to analyze. And today I'm going to be taking a view on the ZAR 40, which is the South Africa 40 cash index. I prefer to take views on, in, on, on, on the index just so that I can diversify my risk. With single stocks, there's a lot that could go wrong. And I hope when I do take a view on a single stock, it has to be a definite view. Even within the ZAR 40, I'm able to still take views on stocks depending on the weighting of the constituents of this index. So my view currently is on stay-at-home stocks. We don't have many in South Africa, but as you have seen internationally, the NASDAQ continues to make highs on a daily basis and tops above 10,000 points. So the way I can access it in South Africa is through NASPASS and process who own 10 cent in Hong Kong. So my view is on NASPES and, pro and process within this index and the heavy weighting. And because of some analysis I've done at a fundamental level, I've looked at the derivatives and I've seen that there's a lot of action happening in the options market on 10 cent to show that there's a going to be a, a lot of interest in, in NASPES going forward. So as I said, I make my analysis at a fundamental level. I look at those volatilities on certain strikes on the 10 cent options, and it, then I can make a prediction on, on where I think the next move will be for 10 cent and process. So I also like the 
the exposure to the defensive and the heavyweighting of BTI. People carry on smoking, they've banned smoking, but people still find a way to smoke that I've seen. So I, I like the defensive qualities of that in a coronavirus market. So as I said, I make my fundamental analysis at the top and then I move to the technicals to then to justify what I, to justify what I view on the fundamental basis. So I'm gonna just take you through what sort of charts we have here at Think Markets. So I've seen over the years is that a lot of traders, retail traders look at a price chart and think that price chart tells them the same thing. Usually what you do find on, on, on charting systems is different types of charts. And the different types of charts you find are a bid price chart, which is the price that you are going to be selling at, and an ask price chart, or an offer price chart, which is the price that you are going to be buying at. The third type of chart is an average price chart, which takes away the market spread between the bid and offer. And that's what I call market spread. I call that noise because so many affects it. So many things affect market spread. So I'm gonna go through why is it important for you to know which chart you're viewing. First of all, risk management. When you buy a security, you buy it at the offer price or the ask price. But when you exit, you exit at the bid price. So now if you're doing your risk management on the same chart that you bought at, you're then not positioning your stops at the right places. Or you could even conversely start looking at not putting your take profit levels at the right places. So I found that in my, in my experience with clients is that they'll be calling into the dealing line and say, nope, but NASPA has traded at that level. You should have closed my trade out. And then I ask them, what price chart are you looking at? And then they'll tell you, but the chart. Okay, there are three types of charts. So know which price chart you are looking at from the get-go so that you know which what you're analyzing and what you want to look at. So as I say, I like looking at and simplifying it for myself. I like looking at the average price charts or the mid price chart. As I said at the beginning, that's the price which I find the most clean because it takes away market spread. A lot of things affect market spread going from volatility. If you know if somebody's sitting on any one side of any trade, and then it just brings a lot of noise to the chart if, if, if we then choose either or. So I like analyzing the average price chart because it takes away the noise. So I'm gonna take you through a couple of trend, a couple of lines, and these lines I use in my analysis. The first lines I want to go through are support and resistance lines. And these are the points in a chart where the price is likely to find opposition from market participants. So as I'm gonna first draw a support, a support line, and then you can find it on the toolbox here, which is, which is signified by a pencil at the bottom of the toolbar. And then you can choose from the different types of horizontal lines. A support and resistant line is a horizontal line. The view on my trade is a two week trade so I'll be looking for a support that the Zar 40 found over the past two weeks. So I'm looking from about the 25th of June and I see that a support was found here on the 25th of June, around about 46,400 points. So I just then click on that point in order to then enter a support line. So as we said, the support and resistance lines are points in the chart where the price finds opposition. So sellers at this point decided, no, the market is a little bit oversold. So let's support this price. And then you can start seeing right here that buyers started coming back into market to then drive the price higher. It's just at that point where, at this point of inflection between that horizontal line that support was found in the past two to three weeks, then now I'm going to then show you what, how to draw a resistance line. Go back to the toolbox here. 
still find the horizontal line and then look for where the price found a little bit of resistance. So it's a point where now buyers thought we're buying this market up too much. It's time that we take a little bit of, pro we take some profits off the table and then we then start seeing a little bit of a sell-off in the market. And there is the point where we find a little bit of, re of resistance and then we can draw the line there. So as you can see, the support and resistance lines over the past two weeks, you can find a little bit of resistance in the top four, in the ZAR 40 at about 51,571 points in 68. And you find a little, uh, some, some support here at 46,059 spot 85. It's quite a big range. It's almost 5,000 points. That's a 10% range that you'd expect the market to move in for the foreseeable future at the moment. For as long as there is no breakout at the top, then you, you, will, then you do know in future price movements, you'll find a little bit of resistance at that point and a little bit of support at, that, at, at the 46,059 spot 85 point on the ZAR 40 chart. So what else I'm, I was able to see over, over the past week or so. So when I was doing my analysis on this chart, there was a support which was found right here at about 49,000 points, 49,900 points that I found when I was doing my analysis. And then I'm also going to just draw a, a, sub, a resistance line there just to signify the breakout. So previously in the past two weeks, that's the support that the market found, the resistance that the market found at the top end of, of the range when it was trying to, uh, when the market was trying to find some direction to the top side. And when I analyzed it, that's where the support, the, the resistance was. As you can see, there's been a breakout pattern above that, above that resistance line signifying that the market is ready to make new highs. So my fundamental basis is I believe Naspers is going to drive the ZAR 40 up. And as you can see, the ZAR 40 finds some resistance there and then broke out from there. So I'm also going to now start showing you how to use trends. Because I always say with trends and momentum, I don't have enough money to change the market. I need to follow the trend. If you don't follow the trend and you're going to take a contrarian view on the market, you're always going to find yourself wanting because you probably don't have enough money to change the market. Only institutions have that kind of money and only a collective of institutions have that kind of money. So I also want to draw a trend just to signify that the market is on the move up. So what I'm going to do is go back to the toolbar and find the, horror, the trend line right here on the list of lines. Click on it, and the trend starts round about here on the 23rd of March, where the ZAR 40 and most stocks on the ZAR 40 uh, far, uh, found their they lows. And you can see from when the buying power came in, it's just been a trend line up on this market to signify that I am going in the right direction and I am going to. Uh, not change the trend because I just simply don't have the funds to change the trend. What I also saw when I was doing my analysis on, 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 on Friday last week is that there's a channel which is starting to, 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 to emerge right here in the, ZAR, in the ZAR 40 from about the 15th of May since it's found some, some, uh, some support to the upside. So I want to also just signify one more line and that's an upper trend line. So as I said, you find some, 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 some buying power right here and it continues finding a point of inflection right by that resistance line that, 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 I, that, that I drew before it, it, it formed the breakout. So what we start to see here is that this market is really in an ascending channel pattern. So an ascending channel pattern is when you expect that the market is a price action contained between an upward sloping parallel line where the market is signifying that it's going to start making higher highs and higher lows. 
So as you can see that most of the support that the market has found in, in these two weeks was right here at 46,059, spot 84. But now you can see that it's finding a little bit of support at a higher, at a higher lows and also starting to break out to the top end of this ascending channel. So as you can see, once, as you can see that you can then start looking at how you're going to price your entries and how you're going to price your risk management strategy. So at the end of it all, as I said, these are the two lines that I wanted to show you. A trend line, which we say signifies a trend either to the upside or the downside, and a support and resistance line, which are points in a chart where the price is likely to find opposition from the market, purely from it being a psychological level where the market now starts to see that this, is, this sold off for too much, so let's, let's bring back some buying power into the market. So part of my analysis, as I said, is just how I'm going to show you how to use trend and momentum indicators. The universe of indicators is, is a far reaching universe. There are many indi indicators under the sun. And I can show you a list of indicators we have here at Think Markets. I just need to go to the toolbar as we went before and click on indicators and I'll click again on add indicators. And as you can see here, there's over, there's, there, there's over 80 indicators. And as I said, we're trying to find ways to simplify our technical analysis and simplify our charting. You don't want to add two momentum indicators which actually tell you the exact same thing. So my advice to you is, go Google is your friend learn about indicators and learn which ones you are comfortable with. I like to keep it simplified because I'm just trying to understand and just trying to get confirmation from the market on my fundamental views. So to you as a retail trader and as a beginner, I'll always say Google is your friend. Use Google as much as you can and learn about each and every indicator that you feel comfortable with. But as I say, if you find that a moving average tells you the exact same thing as a moving average converges divergence, you don't need to have both of them on your chart. So as I said, I'm just going to use a simple moving average as my momentum, as my trend indicator. So how I do it is just I, I search for it, simple moving average, I click on it and I add it and then it's added onto my chart. And as you can see here, you then have the tools at the top left in order to amend the dates and on which you're looking over, uh, the period of which you want that moving average to signify. So as I said to you, why a moving average is very important to me is that it takes away the noise in the market. So it's a simple way of smoothing out a price for fluctuation to help you distinguish between a typical market noise or actual market movement upwards. So, I mean, you know, on any one day, some surprise, surprise announcement can come out in the market that pushes up, pushes up the ZAR 40, and that is an anomaly. So I want to take out all the noise and understand what is the average price that the ZAR 40 has, has moved in the past 20 days. As I said, I'm looking at my trade to be about two, 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 two weeks, two and a half weeks. And as you can see here, that the trend is signifying a way up. And that's confirmation on my analysis on the ZAR 40 that I believe it's going to tra trend on this tra ascending channel pattern. And the trend just signifies it and really confirms it to me. So that's one indicator that I use in order to confirm for me that I am on the right path with my fundamental analysis. On here, you find the toolbar of the simple moving average. I'm gonna click on the settings and here's where you can amend if you want a longer moving average. Do you wanna look at a 50 day moving average? Do you wanna look at a 20 day moving average? And it all depends, I always say it all depends on the, the, the likelihood and the time horizon that you have in mind on the market moving in your direction. As I say, for me, a trade could be a day or a two week trade or a month trade or even up to 12 months. So, I mean, there are some trades where you start to see that 
I can I I have a directional bet on this to move on the upside, and I could you could definitely see that over the long term. I think the market will do this, and then you would just then come to come to the settings tab on your simple moving average to just amend your period basis to tell you what the trend has been in the longer data time period that you are looking at. So the second indicator that I want to bring your attention to is a resistance strength and RSI. So how are we gonna add the, rel the relative strength index? Is we go again to add indicator and we're gonna just search RSI. As you can see there, there's a stochastic RSI, two RSI. I'm just gonna use a simple basic relative strength index to just indicate to me where momentum in the market is right now. As I said to you, Google's your friend. If you want to use stochastics, if you want to use the two RSIs, you can, but I'm saying research them as much as you can and get a, 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 an understanding of them and get an understanding of what exactly they're there to tell you. So I'm going to add that for myself. And as you can see, the RSI then pops up at the bottom of this chart. And on this RSI, you're able to then see that the momentum was on the upside up until something changed here, which was, to, which, which was in the past couple of days. And it was actually today when fears of coronavirus came back into the market and the market saw a recent sell-off after NASPERS and Process uh, performed well yesterday. So how this, what this indicates to me is that the market is just going to go into a little bit of a breather and take a, a little bit of profits off the table and will probably find support on this lower trend line where I think there will be a great opportunity to start buying this market. So... Because of the of the sell off today, it gave it gave it gave traders an, another chance to come into the market after yesterday's relatively very strong day after Tencent performed very well in Hong Kong. So on this day, on today, and going forward, you will find some a little bit of buying power coming back here, and then you can then also put a risk management strategy to put stops along this lower trend line. And we'll just await this market to have a bounce back up. And as I said, it found a little bit of resistance just up here at 51,000 points. So, I mean, that's a good 2,000 point movement currently. A good gain on 2,000 points. It's a good gain of, of around about 5% of that, that you could be looking at in terms of, of profits on the upside. And then you can also protect yourself on the downside by having a trailing stop along the lower end of this trend of the lower end of this trend line so in my analysis as i said simplify your charting know what each line is telling you this is a lower trend line upper trend line support with uh, resistance which was found about a, uh, about three days ago, which has which has a breakout pattern at the top, and this breakout pattern signifying higher highs and higher lows, and as you can see, the lows are getting higher, and at the top end, the highs are getting higher. So, on that. I have then illustrated to you how to trade the trend, the ascending channel pattern, the basics of understanding the trend and momentum indicator, and how to use the tools on your charting on ThinkTrader, how to simplify your charting, which charts are there to use for you, and then how then to marry fundamental and technical analysis in your analysis. 
So what I'm going to want to show you is an interesting feature that we have for our clients currently here at Think Markets. So I'm, I'm going to show you a, a, a trading tool which will help you get to, uh, get to get trade ideas and see signals that we do offer. So I'm going to first log on to the Think Portal. So I'm going to go to www.thinkmarkets.com forward slash ZA forward slash. And at the top, I'm going to click where it says client login. I'm then going to click on Think Portal. And I'm going to log myself into my Think Portal. And alongside on the left, you're going to see four tabs that say my account funding, trading accounts, and trading tools. Click on trading tools, then click on auto chartist. And then right here, you see that Think Markets has established a partnership with Auto Charges to bring their services to Think Markets account holders to help traders gain an added advantage in trading news and events. So what Auto Charts gives Auto Charters gives you is key levels, quality indicators, alerts on the market, and also gives you slight probabilities on where the, the technical analysis say the market is going to go. So I'm just going to just give you an illustrative example of maybe one in, uh, index that might, that might interest you. So as you can see that there's a list of, 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 of different indices from across the world, from the Kakao 40 to the, to the Standard & Poor's 500 to the Dow Jones 30, and as you can see here, that there's a, there's a signal here on the DAX showing that the forecast for the DAX to move down to 12,150 points, spot 89, a level of probability of 74% on, or uh, 74% for that price action to happen. And as you can see, this is, as I know, one thing that Simon trades. So I'd just really like to ask him, what do you think? Do you think the DAX is going down? Yeah, so I'm <laughs> short term, but that DAX is looking ugly. Well, unless, unless it holds, but. Uh... So let's recap on what we're going through. Know which chart you're using and what it indicates. As we said, there's an average price chart, there's a bid price chart, there's an offer price chart. It's very helpful to know which chart you're on because you want to manage your risk well, know where to place your stops, where to place your take profits, and know when, what entries are available for you. When you buy the market, you buy the market on the, on the offer price or the ask price, you exit the market on the bid. So you don't want to be analyzing the, the offer price or the ask price chart in order to tell you when to exit the market or when to where and where to put your stops. Also, Simplify your charting and understand what the chart is showing. I just showed you three lines, support, resistance, and trend lines, both on the upper and the lower end of the trade line. And also, as you see, when the market forms an ascending channel pattern, you expect that the market will make higher highs and higher lows. You can use the lower trend line in terms of your risk management in order to adjust your stops as the market trends higher. And then you can also start using the, your resistance line at the top end in order to see where the market finds a potential breakout. At this time, I'll just, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, questions. If I don't know the answer, I'll get back to you tomorrow. If I do know the answer, I'll answer it, or I might just pass it on to Simon Brown in order for him if he does have an answer for for you as well. Okay, I've had actually a couple have been uh, sent through. I had some tweets and uh, 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 an email. But folks, if you've got questions, drop them in the Q&A box, drop them in the, in the chat. Uh, one around your fundamentals. And the question is, was, do you do a discounted cash flow? Or is that way too deep for your, your, your fundamentals? 
Well, to, to, to be perfectly honest, as a trader, I, 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 read, I read through financials and I read through analyst reports. I don't do, I don't run my own DCF. I think it's, it's a tedious process to be running and cleaning up the data. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I am trained as an accountant, so I do use Excel a lot and I do know how to run a DCF. Just don't have the time. Just takes up too much of your time. You're going to spend most of your time analyzing a DCF and trying to clean up the data and not any time getting any, not a lot of time analyzing the market. So I, I do read analyst reports um, and do also part of my analysis is just to listen to other market commentators speak on the market. So Simon Brown, listen to what he has to say, David Shapiro's, Wayne McCurry's, and then start then debating with yourself internally as to if you agree with them or not. Yeah, look, I, I don't, I mean, you're ahead of me. I'm not even trained as an accountant. I read other people's DCFs. I'm with you as that. Um, auto Chartist, does Auto Chartist offer a head and shoulders facility? I'm really unsure about that. I can get back to, to, uh, to you about that. To I've, got, I've got that one. Yeah. Uh, it's read one, yeah. Uh, so it, currently right now, the feature we have, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It will be offering it. Um, we're actually upgrading the entire auto charters platform. Uh, in the next two weeks, you will have actually a lot more and you'll actually even be able to plug it in to the trading platform directly. So you could actually trade directly. Ah, it. Okay, cool. No, I'd like it. Because the reason the question has been asked, and I can't remember now who asked it, um, was because head and shoulders is typically considered the most reliable charting pattern uh herbert uh, asks is there a trailing stop loss on think trader think trader no doesn't have a trailing stop loss so you need to adju adjust your stops as the market moves yourself okay so you're doing it manually as the market's heading in your direction and, and rechanging uh, shane asks around how do you decide on stocks indices to trade based on liquidity volumes Volatility, Kia, I'll give you a moment. I'll give my answer to it now. I mean, Shane, the first thing for me as a trader and why I like the DAX, I, partly it's about time zones. You know, my favorite index to trade is, is the S&P, but, uh, you know, it, it messes with my evening. So I, I, I don't trade it. Um, I trade DAX. So partly it's time zones. And then I, I like indices because, and I like indices I don't know too much about because it removes my bias from the equation. Um, and indices don't have single event risk. As soon as you start delving into equities, yeah, issues such as liquidity is, is a huge point. You, you want those large cap stocks. And, you know, people will often consider them boring, but, you know, NASPAS process, some of those big stocks, I mean, our, our Goldies, our, our, our resource stocks, you know, they can give you three, four, five, six percent in a day in an ungeared environment. That's plenty to go through. Okay, uh, your thought on, on, on how you whittle down from, you know, what is literally a universe of thousands of p potential trade opportunities and think trader, how do you narrow it down? So how, how I know, I mean, I, I, I pretty much Rudwan as my boss will tell you that my screens are full of numbers and just full of, I, I'm, I'm actually, I am consistently watching volumes mm -hmm. and starting to, to, to find price disparities in the market. And also I, I, it's, it's at a high level. I mean, most of these terminals that we're using are quite expensive for the, for, for the retail trader to have a, to have a look at. So I'd also just starting to see, which brokers in the market start having a lot of action in certain securities. So I know where the liquidity and the volumes are coming from and which side of the trades, which side of the market they are taking either through market making or just purely on agency. So on single stocks, that's how I'd, I'd be looking at. I'm just looking at the noise. So as I said, in my analysis on charts, I don't want noise, but on the normal day basis, I'm looking for the noise. You're looking for um, the price section. Where is um, it happening? Where, where is are it the happen traders? Yeah. Where are the traders? Where's most of the action? And who's in that action? So it also matters which brokerage house is, is, is in the action. So if you're finding a big, 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 big broker in, 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 that, in, in that market, then I know something is happening, some order is moving. And then I'm also just looking at volume disparities over, over a couple of days. As, 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 I, as, I, as I said a couple of days ago, for me, something like Sassol. So, I mean, Sassol had huge price swings a couple, of, uh, um, a couple of weeks ago. And I mean, if you generally were running just the regression analysis, just so seeing, 
uh, the, the, the correlation between the price of oil and the price of Cecil, mm -hmm. it, it usually has some sort of correlation. But on those, on those couple of days, there was just huge price action with no correlation. And for me, I just realized it's just liquidity went up by 300, uh, volumes went up by 300%. And it was just trying to find out where do these volumes come from? So it's, 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 it's then starting to see that, okay, something is up. Is there somebody in the market? Probably not. I also found that one thing I've learned about retail brokers is that when they hedge their exposure, they're very price agnostic. So a lot of the hedges happen at the market price. Yeah. So you may be finding that a lot of their trades are coming through their platforms, like Think Markets. And then when it's time to hedge, we hedge at the market price. We do not wait for a specific price to hedge. We hedge. And those, depending on which side of the trade we're sitting, that will move the market because of, 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 the, of the leverage that we do offer, our, leverage we do off our clients. So I look out for those sort of things. Great question coming from, from Zia, and I'll give an answer to it. Do you need an accounting background to understand, to get, need a, a basic understanding of financial statements? So yeah, I have no accounting background. And, you know, there's a lot to look at, but, you know, you, you start to figure what matters, what's important. Um, and as Kia said, you know, for the more in-depth you can go, there's always, you know, the, the, there's the peeps on, on, on the wireless every evening and the TV when McCurry's and the like, who they've got, you know, they, they've gone and done the, the DCS. So no, you don't need a, an accounting background. You can get a, a, a broad understanding of, of the business. And also a lot of it, as Keir was using in the presentation, is just understanding the industry and understanding the, de the demand dynamics. And, and those are, are, you know, a bit of common sense and a bit of Googling gets you to that point. Um, second part, part yeah, red one. So sort of step in on that one there, that accounting background, you know, there's, I mean, we've had this, me and you have been doing, mm -hmm. answering, I think this question for like 15 years. And because we always say to people, you know, you need to at least research the companies you're going into. And I always used to tell people in the presentation, you know, to read a financial statement can actually be quite easy. If something's in brackets, it normally means bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and what you're looking for ultimately is well first and foremost is the company making a profit yeah and if they're making a profit yeah that's a good thing already that's your first very big tick then you can start diving into things like your pe ratios and all of these things but i always say start start with uh, the basics you know um look at a look at woolies you can go right now uh, woolies is busy as can be in south africa uh, but at the end of the day, if you just look at their financial statements, you'll see that they're making a loss. And that was, well, because of David Jones and everything else. But yeah. that's it. That's as simple as it is. It's literally reading into that. Yeah, that's the point. And it is keeping it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's about keeping it simple. And, you know, do you need to marry both fundamentals and technicals? You, you can, but you don't have to. There are traders out there, I know, who, who, who won't even know the company that they're trading. They just know the code and the chart. Um, and, and there are others who, who would do a blend of both. It's personal preference. When I'm trading my indices, you know, as I say, the DAX, I mean, there are 30 stocks in that index, and I can't even pronounce 90% of them. And the other 10% I've never heard of. And that suits me well. Then it's just about the price action. But also, you know, it depends on your time frames. When I'm trading indices, I'm in those trades for 10, 15 minutes, and, and then I'm out. Take my money and, and, and run. Uh, Shane, you're asking about share buybacks as an indicator to trade. Uh, it's not, un, not usually used given that we have in sense news. Shane, the point with share buybacks is, is particularly in the States where it's been giant, um, but even in South Africa, it gives you an underpinning. It, it gives you a, a, a big buyer. As Keir was mentioning a moment ago, you know, you now know that the company is going to be in the market. They're going to be buying those shares. You might not know the price, but oftentimes you can actually see it on the chart. And sometimes, long for life did it, they told you what the price they would be buying at. And they told you the quantity they would be buying. So it kind of gives you a flaw. So it might not be a reason to jump in and buy, but it kind of says, well, hey, he has a flaw in the price where, where the company is coming in and they're buying. So, you know, once we get close to that, maybe that's an entry point if you've got some other, you know, uh, pieces come into the equation. So I, I do think it's more important. I would like to see a lot more transparency on it. Uh, some companies are better than others. 
often you've got to go in and and you know delve through sense announcements and and uh, 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 annual reports and the like to try and get a sense of 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 what they're buying and where they're buying and if they're still buying. But uh, certainly, I think it's something that we can add to 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 a trader's arsenal. One thing I have to say about those buybacks, they're not going to happen for any company anytime soon. There's a great point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I saw a chart for out of the US today. Share buybacks have collapsed 98%. And my first thought was, so who's the 2% still buying? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Not many companies are going to be in the market to, to, to come buy back shares just because purely they, they just want to reserve cash at the moment. And no one, they, they're probably going to come to market for cash in accelerated book builds and increased rights issues. So in the, in the next year or two, I don't think you'll even have to look at a share buyback strategy yeah. in trading. Yeah. They're, 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 they're not buying at the moment. They're selling shares, 100%. They're selling book shares. builds, rights <laughs> issues, et cetera. They, they're selling shares. Red one, you can help with this. This one, it came through on my Twitters. Um, the Think Markets, will you at some stage be offering SA equity? So not for trading, where I can go and buy a share rather than a CFD on the share. Yes, that's the simple answer. We are cool. definitely going to be offering uh, SA. We're going to be offering normal equities as well. Uh, keep an eye out; uh, they'll be coming. Cool. Can't give you an exact time frame, unfortunately. No, no that, the question was just uh, not when, but if you would, and you would, and that that's important. Uh, Kerry, another question that came on my Twitters. Um, folks are saying, are asking, you know, your, your, your process, very simple, very sort of light technical analysis. Uh, you're not going into some of the more sort of complex uh, one stochastics and the like that are out there. Is that a personal preference? Or is that simply because you, 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 don't, you don't like their, 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 their validity in a sense? Well, well, I think it's a, it's a bit, it's a, I mean, to be perfectly honest, um, I got into understanding technical analysis very, very late on in, into my career. Mm -hmm. And but pretty much why that was so is because part of me didn't, didn't see any validity to just watching a chart and then trying to pre predict price action from there. That they had to be a little bit more than that. And then how I came to start marrying the two was actually seeing a lot of my analysis, my fundamental analysis starting to match up to this simple technical analysis. As I said, I want to look at momentum. I want to see the trend. I don't have enough money to change the momentum or the trend. So I follow where the money goes. Yeah. So for, with that simple, basic technical analysis kind of really just it does it for you. You don't need to now start looking at, at very advanced technical analysis where now you need to now spend 80 hours of your week like a job trying to understand it. <laughs> I just didn't, I have a day job. Um, I really do enjoy my day job. I get to watch markets the whole day. But within my day job, I, I also can't be learning technical analysis for, for eight hours in my day. Yeah. Red one would not be very happy. So, <laughs> so I, I pretty much got to, to, to just simplify it for myself and just get to a point where I'm marrying, I'm just confirming what I've made as a thesis on my fundamental analysis and just confirming it with technical analysis. No, and I agree. I, I, I concur with that. And I mean, yeah, I, I've spent, uh, what, two and a half decades in the markets and, and there's, there isn't a technical analysis indicator I didn't, the technical indicator I didn't try in the early days, the late 90s, early 2000s. And it's not that they don't work, but it comes back to what what what, what Kier said right up front. And, and that is, keep it simple. You know, the, the, all you're trying to find is a little edge here, complexity. And as human beings, we are designed to believe in complexity. Um, but truthfully, in trading, complexity isn't an aid. It, 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 it's about keeping it simple. And we were talking about price action earlier. And, you know, price action is one of the most powerful things. And there's nothing that you can lay on a chart. Price action is just, just watching charts, watching, watching, watching. And, and the more you watch, the more it starts to click. And, you know, when I'm trading DAX, when I'm trading Aussie futures, uh, SA40, I'm just trading in the price action. And, and you know, let's be quite clear, that's not where I started. But uh, you know, over the years, it's the skill that, I, that, that, I, that I've learned and, and, and developed. And simplicity has always been a, a better way to manage it. Shane's asking, he says, first session on the platform, uh, red one costs of, of, of running a trade and how much leverage uh, is available on the, the think markets? Um, so from a cost of running a trade, depending on what you're trading in, um, I've just on the chat, I've just put up a link there to the entire 
uh, what we call our contract spec page, which will give you all the costs, cool. but uh, as well as leverage and the likes. Um, but we've also just let you know, I mean, we've, we don't do uh, commission charges on, on indices and the likes. Uh, we only charge a 0.2% with no minimum on CFD shares for South African shares. And remember, you can trade also any share, CFD share around the world. I mean, there's over 1,200 CFD shares. So it just depends on which market you're trading in. There's obviously a different fee for each of those markets. Um, and yeah, you can have a look at it all there. But uh, to be very frank and honest, we're the only broker right now in South Africa that has a 10% margin requirement on all the top 78 listed shares on the JSE. And uh, we charge a 0.2% brokerage on that. With, and then no, we've, with no minimum. With no minimum. Yeah, and then uh, just uh, a side note, uh, we've just pretty much been upgrading our what we call our Think Zero account for your FX and metal traders, uh, which has literally a zero spread on it. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, zero spread is my favorite type of spread. I always like zero when it's, <laughs> when it's costing me stuff. Zero is my favorite number of them all. So yeah, I mentioned this podcast trading, or me or Aussie, uh, best place to start trading because it's so difficult to trade, possible to trade them on your portal. Yep, so I mean, the, the SA40 is on the portal. So what I like about about the index, as I said, is that single event risk, you know, um, uh, you know, you, I, I'm trying to think of an example and truthfully there are hundreds of them right now. You know, Sasso comes out and says they don't have a hedge and the share price collapses and then Sasso comes out and says they do have a hedge and the share price rallies. Now, if you're on the right side of those trades, there was money to be made, make no mistake about it. Um, I just like indices. I find them less volatile. And I, I know it's weird. I know traders actually like volatility, but I find I, I trade better with a lower volatility. Um, and, and, and truthfully, yeah, to your point, and, and as Redwan said, uh, the no minimum makes a significant uh, 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 help in the process. Because when you're starting to trade, now, even if you rocked up with, I don't know, a million bucks as, as a newbie, don't put it into your trading account. You know, start small, start to learn. Because truthfully, you're going to make mistakes just because we're human. And as we learn a new skill while we're learning, we make those mistakes and we, we need to, to, to manage them. Um, SA40, Red One, you do have the, the, the SA40, which is essentially the Aussie on, on the think markets. Yeah, it's the ZAR40. ZAR40. Um, yeah, the difference, the, the big difference is that the one's a future, obviously, the Aussie. Mm -hmm. um, ours is not a future. And the benefit between the two is that with us, you can actually go down in contract size. So you don't have to take out one contract. Uh, you can actually take out 0 0.01 of a contract. Okay, that is a big, yeah, because I mean, I, I, I forget what margin is, but the, the, the margin 10%? is, no, the margin not on the JSC, it ain't no more, dude, I can tell you. I yeah, I know think, that. <laughs> I think an Aussie contract margin is somewhere around 60 odd grand per contract these days. Okay. Um, and I, you know, volatility, et cetera, et cetera. So is there a short answer? Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said, yeah, the nice thing of it is if you want to do 0 0.1 of a contract, uh, you can do that. I mean, that's going to be margin of 120 rand. That, that's especially cool on things like the DAX. And I, I'm not sure what your pricing mm -hmm. is, but you know, some of those DAX contracts are 50 euros Euro. a point. Um, and that starts Also to... spreads. I, I think the difference, the well, one also, thing yeah. you, need to be, you need to be cognizant of in the future is that the future has a very... Well, spread. so on the and DAX, you cross the six point spread at 50 euros a point. That's 300, point, 300 euros just to get into the trade. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, look, uh, on the DAX, you can also do 0 0.01. Yeah, yeah. So, so start small. Don't, don't be afraid of starting small. We, we, we're learning out here. You know, when you want to be a brain surgeon, they, they don't give you a professor to operate on the first time. Um, and there's a good reason for that because <laughs> you're probably going to mess it up. Uh, you know, that's a very good point, Simon, is that a lot of us, and, and you know this about me, I always say to people, don't, don't use the demo account when you've got no minimum or anything else and you trade in such smaller amounts. Why use a demo account? Use, go live. You're going to learn much, much better lessons from doing it live than through a demo account. Yeah, intuitively, I disagree with you about that, but I get why you're saying it because you can go so small because the point yeah. is demo accounts are lacquer, but... <laughs> When I mean, there's no real money at stake, you're not truthfully learning very much. You, you, you're learning how to use the system, and, and that's important, you know, how, which buttons to click. Um, but if you can just put a couple of hundred rand at risk, then that focuses your mind. Eh? That absolutely focuses your mind. 
Uh, contact details. Uh, okay, have you got a screen there for contact details? Shane wants more details for further support. All right. Or an email number. Uh, sorry, email address. So email address is simple. It's support at thinkmarkets.com. And then you can then find our contact details right here. Ah, there You're there. going to be using the South African number right there. Perfecto. And you can also do live chat. So, and um, look, we have 24 seven support, but uh, just remember the South African team is available from half past eight to five o'clock every day. Mm -hmm. And then thereafter we have a support team in the UK as well as in Australia to cover the time zones overnight. Cool. Don't, don't, kill us if you, don't kill us if you're phoning at 12 o'clock at midnight and you end up speaking to somebody in Australia. Please Aussie. don't kill us. <laughs> Can't yeah. be hard. It wasn't our fault. <laughs> hey, it's at least not the Aussie. Okay. Now, folks, we'll park it there. I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. We're about to bump up against the time. Uh, Kia, appreciate your time. Red one, appreciate your time. Ladies and gents, really, really appreciate yours as well. Uh, everyone, have a great evening further. Thanks very much for your time this evening. Cheers, all. Excellent. Yes. Bye. <clears throat>